Hero Mom Rescues Her Kidnapped Son By Wearing a Genius Disguise Whether you're overprotective or laid back, every mom has one thing in common. Strength. You need it if you want to become a mom because having a child comes with too many fears to count. There's the fear that your kid will be bullied. Fear that your kid will get sick. The terrible list goes on. Of course, then there's the fear. The one some moms can barely think about at all. Kidnapping is truly every parent's nightmare. This was mom Callie Atia's biggest worry as well. One she saw come true before her very eyes. But instead of giving up, Callie did what most moms would do. She hopped on a plane and donned a clever disguise, determined to see her son again. Of all places Callie Atia thought she'd end up, the side of the road in the middle of Egypt wasn't on her list. Of course, meeting a man like Mohammed Atia wasn't in the plan either. The day they first met, everything changed. In 1999, Kali was on track to get her master's degree in education when she met Atia, who was working in a restaurant in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. They got married a year later, but according to Kali, that's when their love story took a turn. Three months after our boy was born, he left, Callie said of Atia. Callie found herself suddenly alone with her newborn son, Nico. She was thrust into the role of a single mom, no matter how hard Callie fought for her marriage to survive. Then the truth came out. Basically, he married me for a visa, Callie revealed. When their divorce was finally granted in 2005, Atia moved to Egypt, though Callie tried to keep him in Nico's life. This ended up being a fateful mistake. You see, in July of 2011, Atia told Callie that his mother was dying and that her final wish was for Nico to see her. The problem? Atia's mother lived all the way in Egypt. Still, Callie knew what she had to do. Callie and Nico flew all the way to Egypt with Callie's sister, Maria, in tow. When Atia picked them up in a taxi, all three climbed in. But minutes later, as the family was traveling down a lonely dirt road, the car suddenly started to sputter. Atia complained of car trouble and pulled over. According to Callie, that's when everything changed. Atia forced Callie and Maria out of the car, slammed the door, and immediately disappeared down the road, taking Nico with him. Callie described the moment in terrifying detail. Nico was pounding on the back window, asking, screaming for me and his aunt. Callie said, but all the two women could do was chase the taxi until it was gone, leaving only tire tracks in its wake. Abandoned in an unfamiliar country, Callie and Maria tried not to panic. Callie knew this wasn't a mistake. As much as she had once loved Mohammed as her husband, there was no denying that he played a much different role now, Nico's kidnapper. Callie immediately contacted the local authorities, but it wasn't long before they realized the police were no help. See, there was another element to Nico's kidnapping that was greatly complicating things. In 2011, Egypt was in the midst of a revolution. Callie had no doubt that this revolution would inhibit the police's search and that it probably had something to do with why Atia kidnapped Nico in the first place. Still, this information didn't get Callie any closer to locating her son, so she made some calls. When the local police couldn't help her, she contacted private detectives. As the months passed and still Nico was nowhere to be found, even the most experienced and expensive detectives were forced to return to Callie empty-handed. Callie had nowhere else to turn until she realized something. If detectives couldn't help her, then she'd just have to take matters into her own hands. Some people will say I was crazy, Callie said. I had already lost everything. I had nothing to lose. Some people would find it crazy that she made four trips to Egypt to search for Nico. But if you ask a mother, they probably wouldn't see it as crazy at all. A mother's love stretches far and wide, even all the way to Egypt. To me, it's like a living death, Callie described of life without Nico. You know, I'm walking, I'm breathing, but it's nothing, the emptiness. After two years of hoping, crying, and exhaustive searches, however, Callie discovered that hope wasn't lost after all. 
Despite the enormous financial toll, Callie decided to hire one last private investigator to help her navigate the unfamiliar Egyptian landscape. This, along with her own determination, finally gave Callie the lead she was searching for. She and the private investigator tracked Nico's whereabouts down to Alexandria, Egypt. Once they knew his general location, Callie knew how close she was to seeing her son again, so she couldn't help but throw caution to the wind. While disguised as an Egyptian woman, Callie spent months following her ex-husband and son around Alexandria. She went back and forth between wearing a burqa and a niqab, each time just trying to shield her face from her ex while seeing if Nico was safe. Every time she saw Nico in person, it took everything she had to stick to her plan. I came so close to my son and I could not touch him, she later said. Callie knew patience was key. She had to wait for the right moment to act. And on March 14, 2013, Callie finally made her move. It must have been strange from Nico's perspective. As he walked into school, a woman shrouded in black grabbed his arm and said something he'd waited two years to hear. Nico, it's mommy, come with me. But as strange as it might have been, Nico wasn't scared. Not when he looked into the eyes of the woman who called herself his mother. He recognized them as his mother's eyes, which were characteristically blue. With that in mind, he didn't hesitate. Callie rushed them over to a waiting rickshaw. Get in, she whispered. And Nico did just that. He was once again being shepherded away from a parent, but this time he was on his way to safety. At least, that's what they hoped. As Callie held Nico close to her, she finally learned why her ex-husband had kidnapped her son. Nico told her that his father wanted to make him a Muslim because American society was rotting. Atia, it turns out, was a dedicated member of the Muslim Brotherhood. The duo stayed at a safe house for three weeks before flying home, but just because they were out of arm's length from Atia didn't mean they were safe. Even now, Callie and Nico keep their address a secret from anyone they don't trust. Still, Callie has reason for hope. Mohammed Atia is wanted for kidnapping a US citizen, AKA Nico, and he's also wanted for forging documents that lied about Nico's Egyptian citizenship. Now that Nico is home safe, Callie just wants to regain a sense of normalcy. 